I'm Evan, this is Ruby, and this is Gone Electric. Today we're going to answer the age-old question of how long it might take for you to charge your EV. And Ruby is very, very excited for this one. Clearly. Let's get started. Alright, so the idea for this video came about because I'm aware that a lot of people are concerned about how long it'll take to charge their car if they get a full EV. And um, I mean, a lot of people make fun of things on social media talking about how, yeah, if you go, you know, if you, if you go 10 miles and you have to charge your car for an hour, like congratulations. And um, that is a valid concern in terms of wanting to know how fast it'll take you to charge your car. Because I'll tell you that last week I was charging my girlfriend's uh, Honda Fit, which is gas powered car. And her 10 gallon tank, I was able to fill in five total minutes. It took five minutes total to get into the gas station, find a pump, which worked immediately, and then leave. So keep that time frame, time frame in mind as I go to my most local Electrify America here and charge my car from what I believe will be a state of charge of about 17% all the way up to 80%. Now, I'm gonna do this blindly, meaning I'm not gonna check the EA app I'm not going to sh check the plug share app to see if dispensers are available or working because I don't think a majority of you are going to do that. And frankly, you shouldn't have to, right? You should be able to just taxi your way to your local Electrify America or EVgo or ChargePoint, and you should be able to find an available dispenser. And it should work because when you go to the gas station, I mean, how many times have you pulled up and the pump didn't work, right? Probably never. All right, so we have entered our local Electrify America, and it looks like all dispensers are currently being used. So this is something that you will absolutely run into. So as we wait, and as advertised, state of charge is down to 17%. Uh, I have started my timer on my Apple Watch, which is at two and a half minutes so far. Remember that charging my girlfriend's gas-powered ca car took a total of five minutes, and I did start my timer as soon as I entered the parking lot here. You know, this is really a big issue for people who are looking to get an EV, is the time that it takes to charge at a DC fast charging station, um, because I'm just sitting here waiting for a spot, and uh, we're four minutes in, and we haven't done anything. Um, I did just see somebody, I think, pull out an ID4 just pulled out so we're gonna pull our ID4 in. All right so we're gonna activate the charger here so I'm gonna sign in and there we are at the Regency Seal Beach Center, Electrify America, we're gonna scroll down. Oops, uh, uh, yeah there we are. So dispenser number one, where the dispenser that shares the Chatamo handle as well as the CCS handle. Going to swipe to charge and it now says initiating charging. So let's go outside and check on things. All right so we activated in the app. Uh, it says it's ready to plug in, so that's what we're going to do. And for once, I'm going to remember to take off the flap beforehand. I'm going to grab the CCS handle. And we're going to plug in. Showing a white port light, it is thinking. And the screen says connecting to vehicle. Initiating the charge. If you're interested, we are now 6 minutes and 42 seconds into our time here. We're going to tap continue one time and we are now ramping up. Now at a state of charge of 17% I would expect to get pretty close to peak charge rate of 130 to 135 kilowatts. We are over 100 now. We are at 115. I've used this dispenser before at this exact station before, and it does seem to like 115 for my car. And that may be all we get. Looks like we're settling here at 115 kilowatts. 116. All right. All right. We are at 7 minutes and 55 seconds into it here. I would have already left the gas station, but we're still here. As we wait, I thought I'd mention a couple things to consider when trying to understand how long your DC fast charging uh, session might take. Within the car itself, there are two big factors, the size of your EV battery and the peak charge rate of your specific EV. And every EV has a different peak charge rate and every EV has a different EV, capac uh, EV battery capacity. Now for my VW ID4, the usable capacity of my battery is 77 kilowatt hours. The Tesla Model Y 
is around the same. Um, I think it's 75 kilowatt hours, I think for the long range. A uh, Chevy Bolt EV is around like 65 kilowatt hours. So ID4 is you know, pretty competitive with what's out there right now. So it gives you a pretty good estimate of how long uh, your charge might take. The other factor within the car though is the charge rate itself. Now my ID4 peaks at a uh, kilowatt charge rate of 135. Um, something like a Bolt EV maxes out at 55 kilowatts, so it's a lot slower. So it's going to take longer. So for folks who have Bolt EVs, you can kind of leave in the comments how long it takes for you to uh, charge on average from stated charge of 20% to 80%. But it's going to be longer than it will be for an ID4. Now the Teslas are a little bit faster. They're above 200 kilowatts. Um, and also for Tesla, you can use a supercharger. So it's all in all a more reliable experience. Um, but we're not testing that today. Then the other factor to take into consideration when trying to judge how fast a DC fast charging session might take is the charger the, the, the charger itself. So at Electrify America, the charger dispensers usually range from a 50 kilowatt to 350 kilowatt dispensers. I'm at a station right now that has four 150 kilowatt dispensers. So uh, my car's max charge rate is 135 kilowatts. So I could reach my max charge rate, however, I didn't. And the reason most likely is due to the fact that this dispenser has some level of disrepair. Could be in the cable, could be in the handle, could be in the dispenser box itself. I don't really know, but this is almost always the case at, at Electrify America. Um, it's also been my experience at EVGO, at ChargePoint. It's just kind of a thing that you get used to. Now, how much might that extend your time? It's variable, but I will say that Today, I got a peak rate of 116 kilowatts relative to my possible max of 135 kilowatt. Realistically, that's only going to delay my, uh, my charging duration here by maybe not even a minute, at the most like two minutes. So it's really not that significant. Uh, take into account that if you have an 800 volt architecture EV, like an Ionic 5, uh, a Kia EV6, uh, Lucid, um, and a few others, your max charge rate is going to be faster, more like 250 kilowatts or even faster in the case of a Lucid. So, you know, if you're at a DC fast charging station that does not offer 350 kilowatt dispensers, you will not have as fast of a charging session as you could if you were able to find a charging station that did have 350 kilowatt dispensers. So, for instance, um, I had seen a Porsche Taycan here. It was charging. But it was charging at a 150 kilowatt dispenser. And I know that the Taycan's max charge rate is somewhere in the high 200s, I think, 200 kilowatt. So um, he seemed to be fine charging, but I don't know if he knows, but he's not going to have as fast of a session as he could if he was able to find a dispenser of 350 kilowatts. However, in my experience, and when I've talked to people, the tendency is that people don't really care because... The, the time savings ends up being somewhat trivial, right? So like my parents have an Ionic 5, I have an ID4. The max charge rate difference between those two cars is seemingly pretty big, right? So the Ionic 5's max charge rate is like 240 or 250 kilowatts, 250 kilowatts. Mine's 135 kilowatts. However, going from a state of charge of 20% to 80%, realistically, the time saved is... I mean, it, it can vary, again, based on a lot of things, but if all else equal, you're talking 15 minutes, maybe. Um, and so for some people, that's a big thing. For some people, it's not a big thing. If I am already here charging, and I know I'm going to be here for at least 20 minutes, then an extra 15 minutes on top of that really just for me personally isn't a huge deal. If you're in a rush, you're on a road trip, you got to get going, you're late for work, you're late for presentation, then I can see that time difference being a big deal. But that's something you'll have to judge for yourself. All right, let's do one quick check-in on the charge session here before we unplug in a few minutes. Currently at a state of charge of 72%, and our charge speed is 63 kilowatts. Car is indicating that we've got about five, maybe a little bit less than five minutes left until we hit a state of charge of 80%. Uh, if you remember that when we first plugged in, our state of charge was 17%, and we hit a max charge rate at that state of charge of 116 kilowatts. So our uh, charge speed has dropped precipitously as we've gone along in our charging session here. And that's normal. 
every EV battery has a charge curve, which is to say that as your EV battery gets fuller and fuller of energy, the charge speed decreases. And that's to protect the battery. It's a normal thing. Makers like Audi equip their EVs with batteries that are composed of a different chemistry, allowing that charging curve to be a little bit flatter, meaning that the charging speed stays more stable as you charge. There's not as much of a drop-off. However, the trade-off typically in that case is that the max charge rate is a little bit lower. And that, folks, is one of the many fun things that you'll learn as an obsessive EV owner. By the way, we're currently at 36 minutes and 50 seconds in our total time duration for this DC fast charging session. And we're at 77% state of charge. All right, and the last check-in before we end our session here, I'm at a charge of 79% and our speed is 63 kilowatts. There we go, we just hit 80% and our ending speed was 63 kilowatts. So let's go outside, unplug, and check the time. All right, so it says, please unplug, and we will. All right, and there you have it. 40 minutes and 50 seconds as our total session duration. Okay, so from the moment that I entered the parking lot here at the Electrify America to the moment that I closed my door and was ready to leave after charging, it took basically 40 minutes. Now that is a lot longer than, than uh, getting gas for a gas car. For my girlfriend's Honda Fit last week, it took uh, five total minutes to fill her uh, 10 gallon tank. I was five minutes in and out total. So uh, it is longer, however, as I was looking around at other people charging around me, it's very evident that you can like do stuff while you're charging. So a big thing that I saw people doing was going to the grocery store, which is right here in the parking lot. Uh, some people went to get stuff to eat. I saw them come back with a bunch of food. Um, the unfortunate thing, of course, is if you're at a charging station that is close to nothing, then it's a little bit more tedious. Um, my recommendation is do some work, check some emails, um, call friends, call family, get caught up on correspond correspondences and stuff like that. Or do what I do and make a freaking video. Well, um, you can do it if you want. I think it's important to note that the first five minutes of the 40 minutes was just waiting on a dispenser to become free. We came in and all dispensers were being used. Importantly, all dispensers seemed to be working and mine worked pretty much just fine, which is a victory in of itself these days. If your concerns were quelled at least a little bit, or if you were just annoyed by all of this, go ahead and share and like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>